recording. There you go. Okay. Welcome, guys, to um, our app 464 session today. Um, did any of you go to, to the um, job fair? Yeah, that is why I'm wearing a tie. Um, tomorrow, if you're or if you're planning to come tomorrow, I think the healthcare employers will be will be there. Yeah. Um, today there, there were just some STEM companies. Epic was there. Yeah, and some consulting companies that have healthcare clients, but mostly they're engineering um, firms and software engineering firms. Yeah. Okay. Um, So what did we do last week? So what we um, we completed the antidepressant data set preparation. Um, and then we started with the disease data set preparation. And we were we ended up with um, a really big data set, right? And um, it will if we don't do something about it about it, it will give us a lot of problems trying to analyze it okay so today we'll learn how to address that um, but before that um, i've sent you guys a draft paper that came from dr Lin. it's actually our um, what we're trying to do in this project okay and what the intention of that project so let's discuss that um, and then we'll continue with the data preparations um, and then Eric, Eric and um, and Digna, Digna is here. Okay, Eric and Digna made some great uh, teach ones for us. Um, so when we break up into labs, we'll follow their teach ones, um, and break their the teach ones. And I will prepare the next each ones, um, which are which are Quant, Shakwanda, and Anne. Okay. And then I think there are again some people who want to um, consult. Um, um, tell me who you are, and then we'll set up a consulting session right after this class. Um, after I prepare Shakwanda and uh, and Anne. Okay. All right. Um, so, what is the draft? The draft. Um, so, as we can see, I think it's not zoomed in enough. Right. Uh, we're trying to create. Uh, an AI guided mental health um, consultation for minorities. So our project is one of the inputs to this AI um, to this AI system. Okay, our um, project will show particularly how African Americans how African Americans react to antidepressants and how differently that react how differently they react um, from a race neutral um, model. So the premise of this is that there's a lot of investment in mental health right now. okay so those of you looking at careers, um, you can see that mental health companies in this paper making a lot of revenue. Um, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Spring Health. It's part of um, CVS. They have a revenue of 126 million. Okay, um, Lyra Health has 338 million. So there's a lot of investments right now. There's also a lot of investments in research for mental health. That's why this project, uh, this paper of Dr. Eleni was funded. Okay, but. Um, we also know that African Americans have poorer response to antidepressants than whites. Um, 
and we wanted to make sure that these AI models are prepared for that, right? Prepared for that, um, that they don't provide the same advice that is for the general population when there should be a tailored advice for um, for African American um, uh, the African American population, and it can of course um, this same methodology will, will can be replicated for other minorities, right? Such as I'm Asian, right? um, Hispanics, um, and so on. Okay? So the methodology that we're trying to do is. Um, is check if the AI recommends a, a certain medication, okay? Um, and then if our own uh, model, our African-American model also recommended the same medication. So we will plot them into this um, quadrant. Um, so um, all of us, which is our model and the AI mod, the race neutral model, we will find, we will plot if they both recommended yes, right? If one recommended yes, but the other recommended no, right? If both of, and if both of them recommended no, and we can see the performance um, using this, um, using this table, okay? In uh, machine learning, uh, this is called the confusion matrix, okay? Confusion, um, I'll type it in, in the chat. Oh, I'll type it here, okay? So it's called the confusion okay. It assesses how confused <laughs> your AI or your model is. It's a confusion matrix. We will create a confusion matrix and um, plot the accuracy. Okay, so if you treated as recommended by the AI, how many actually did remission? How many actually did not go through remission? Those that did not follow the AI, um, how how accurate of how accurate is the AI in terms of achieving remission or not not remission and those and what is um, what is like the reference of the reference performance like of the race neutral model which is if we treat them as if um, as recommended by the AI right so that being said we have to do a bit of modification in our project plan, right? So I, I was joking with Dr. Elemi that this research is so advanced that even the two of us don't know where it's going <laughs> because this is really groundbreaking work um, that we're doing. And then you then you do do your interviews with um, for jobs or during the job fair. You can you can tell them about this this project that we're doing. Um, a lot of there's a consulting company that I talked to, uh, Ignite, and one of their projects is actually on mental health. Um, yeah. So we will not no longer do likelihood ratios. Right? We will no longer do likelihood ratios. We will instead focus on understanding the AI model, and we extended that. Instead of doing the likelihood ratios, we extended um, understanding the AI model because there are a lot of um, data points that we still need to um, add, that we still need to process in order for us to really um, replicate the AI model for our African American population. And then once we understand that, that will be two weeks, right? Um, so previously it was just one week. So we extended that to two weeks and we removed, we removed um, the calculation of likelihood ratios. Then we will update 
our data um, to replicate the prediction, okay? And then predict the response and then test, do, do those tables, the compute confusion matrix, the accuracy uh, analysis, okay? Um, and write our projects. So it's still the same schedule, just the topics will be different. Particularly, I think it was um, this part where we will calculate the likelihood ratios. We will no longer do that. Okay. So Jocelyn and um, Olufarami, you will be uh, helping the class understand the, the model. Okay. All right, so let's continue um, with, the next class, with the next part of our class, which is our data preparations. Yeah, okay. So today we will just be doing, I will just be discussing a very small part of the code. Um, but the work behind it, the headache behind it was huge because I had to find a way to get this thing to run, to get this thing to actually um, run because the data set that we've had became so huge, right? We have um, 6 million rows. And one of the things that we had to do was to create a dummy variable for disease codes. And there are actually like 6,000 plus different diseases in this data set. So we will have to create 6,000 columns. Um, so so I, I will save you some headache, but, in, but use the learnings from this class because you will face the same headache when you do your own analysis, um, when you go to work, right? When you apply this for your own research, for your own um, analysis, when you move on um, to the industry um, and research if you chose the academic path. Um, so, so as we go along, I will give some practical tips. So what you will see are, is already um, like a working, a working solution, a working solution, but you will probably encounter some scenarios when you're working where everything's not working. So I hope that some of these lessons you can remember during that time, okay? So we will grapple with this really big data set and find ways to analyze it using the resources that are available to us, okay? Uh, we To do that, I will show you um, how much to increase the resources and costs. And we will only do it temporarily, okay? Just so that we can run the big data set. Our intention is to run the big data set and make it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then, and then once it's small, we create another checkpoint. So we don't have to do it again, uh, hopefully. Okay? We will see, um, okay? Um, so we need to dramatically reduce the dimensionality of the data. Last week, there were 6 million plus rows, right? That means every column that we add to the data set will add 6 million plus data points, right? Because every column will have a value for each row, okay? So we have to dramatically reduce the dimensions of the data. Dimensionality just means dimensions. Reduce the number of rows and reduce the number of columns because when you multiply that, the number of rows and the number of columns, that's the number of data points that you have, okay? The quickest way is to just reduce the number of columns because every time that I reduce the number of columns, I remove 6 million, uh, the 6 million entries, right? Another way is to remove the rows. So starting in this week, starting this week, we will have different results. We will have slightly different codes and slightly different results because we are not studying the same antidepressants. 
Okay, so we will follow the same algorithms except that our tables will now be a bit different. Okay, or maybe a lot different. Okay, only after we have reduced the dimensionality can we attempt to act to actually convert the 6,000 different disease codes into, uh, into dummy variables because that will give us 6,000 new columns, right? So that, that again, after just do, going through all the work of reducing dimensionality, we increase the dimensionality again. So another thing that we will do is to drop dummy variables, the disease dummy variables that have less than 30 samples. I don't know if you've had your statistics yet, but if there are less than 30 samples, um, um, the count of a sample is less than 30, then um, any, any insights that you have from that sam sample um, might this has a high likelihood of not reflecting um, the correct um, the correct insight, right? So if that sample tells you that, for example, um, African-Americans with diabetes um, have a lower, a lower uh, um, reaction to antidepressants, but there are only there are only 27 and African Americans with diabetes in, in your data sets, then that that um, that finding um, has a big chance of not being true, right? Because the distribution of your sample is not yet normalized. Okay. Then once we um, are able to do this. We can aggregate the data sets. And as I've told you, as I've told you, we'll create a data checkpoint so we don't have to go through this again. Right. So how do we do it? Now that I've scared you enough, let's let's go through it. Okay. Okay. I'll zoom it in a bit. Hundred twenty five will be will be good. The first thing you have to do um, before you even attempt this, right? As we mentioned in our slide, in that slide is we need to increase the resources and costs temporarily. How do we do that? So it might be different for me, for you. I analyzed uh, amitriptyline it had it, but for other antidepressants, the the size of the data set might be different, right? Um, but for amitriptyline, what worked for me was I changed CPs to 32 and RAM to 208. Okay, so my my process is just really go to the next to the next number of cpus and get the highest ram okay if it does not work or you can do the reverse um go to 96 cpus go to the maximum at, at, on the onset right but what I'm, I'm always telling you about conserving resources okay um that will save you some money and if you apply this in the industry, you will save your employer some money and, uh, and they will love you for it. Okay, so what worked for me is 32 CPUs, 208 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, and that changed my cost. 
So before we were doing eight and 30, you were doing, doing 40 cents an hour. Okay. Um, that changed my costs uh, to uh, almost um, no, oh, four times, more than four times that at $1.90 an hour. Okay. So you can, uh, the, the setting might be different from you, uh, but the maximum that you can go is uh, 96 CPUs and 624 gigabytes of RAM. And that will set you at $5.70 an hour. Okay. So once you've chosen that, I also recommend that you change this to eight hours. So that um, your your server won't time out in 30 minutes. Okay, so the default is 30 minutes. Change it to eight hours, and then click next, and then there will be another screen. And then click next again. Okay, I won't do that because I ha still have to teach a lot of classes, and I'm running out of credits. <laughs> so yeah. So so once you've done that. We scroll all the way down. We don't need to run all of these 70 set something cells again. We go to uh, the, the checkpoint that we have created last time and that um, Eric's teach one showed, showed us how to create. Okay. Um, just a heads up, um, when we did the checkpoint, when we did the checkpoint last week, and I think what that's what also um, Eric showed is that it started with this line, but there will be a, there's an error, um, just to because we haven't declared PD right PD is not declared. Uh, just to, to, in order to resolve that, just import your libraries. So pandas, import pandas as PD, import numpy as um, NP, and import OS. Okay, so though these are just the three basic libraries that we're using, um, and it will now it will work. Okay, so we start here. We download our our data frame. Okay, so our data frame has six million rows, six point six million rows, right, and then um, thirty nine columns. And it takes up almost two gigabytes of space, right? And then, of course, we run again um, our uh, data types um, change. We change the data types, okay? And the name for disease group and disease code, okay? And we check if roughly our data looks looks okay. And it does look okay. So here is where our new code starts. So we reduce the uh, dimensionality. So again, it's a multiplication. Uh, uh, a data's dimension, a table's dimension is a multiplication of rows and columns. Okay. So if you want to reduce dimensionality, you have you can reduce the columns or reduce the rows or reduce both. We will do both. This. Um, 1.9 gigabytes in memory doing loops and stuff like stuff like that will really take up resources okay so what are the columns that we will keep okay so these are the columns that we will keep person id ad grouping and trial number as we mentioned last time these are our primary keys um they will uh help us separate uh a record from other records, right? So these are our primary keys. We will also retain the earliest AD start date. Why? Because um, this is our reference, uh, point of reference in terms of dates. Um, we, already, um, we already calculated all the other things like age from, other, from, uh, um, from birth date, so we won't retain that. We only need this as the date, the earliest AD start. Because anything uh, that us, that was done after this date, after the earliest AD start, um, will not matter. It is not predictive of the antidepressant um, 
antidepressant impact for us because it happened after you started the antidepressant. So we need to, to keep this just in case, just in case in the future, um, we add, for example, additional data. And we want to make sure that what the data that we add only happens after we started that uh, before, sorry, before we started the antidepressant and not, not after. Okay. We will keep remission because this is our outcome variable. So remission is what we call an outcome variable. And for the age, we will see that we only imported five out of six. We drop age zero to 13. Okay. Because um, in the dummy, in, in doing regressions, in doing regressions, uh, which are which is a statistical technique, it's a statistical technique that's the foundation of all the artificial intelligence that we have, right? When you, you usually drop a, a one dummy variable, because that will be the reference, right? If you don't drop um, a, a dummy variable, then your regression will have what we call confounding, will have um, un, unreliable outcomes. Okay? Um, so we will drop one dummy variable. And this um, dummy variable trap is only um, is only considered if the variables, the dummy variables are mutually exclusive. Meaning if you are um, in age zero, 14 to 19, you only have that age. You are not in the other age groups, right? But if you can be in both age groups, for example, you're, you can be both 14 to 19 and 20 to 40. That's not mutually ex exclusive. But in this case, age is a mutually, age group is a mutually exclusive um, variable. So we have to drop one. And our intention is to drop variables. So if we need to drop one, then we drop it, right? We also need the antidepressant histories um, because um, when we try to understand, um, we try to understand the AI model, we will see that these are uh, needed. Okay, we only retain female. We drop gender, sex at birth, and stuff like that. And number of episodes, number of remissions, number of antidepressants, and disease scope. Okay, based on the analysis that needs to be done. Um, although we did do a disease group for now, we don't use, we will not use them. Okay, um, so we drop everything that we will use eat, um, we will not use um, and just keep what we will use. And then if we need disease group later, it will be easier to add them in again later instead of processing um, the, the data frame with disease group. And, and we don't need them, right? So we just add them later if we need it. And once we once we created this columns to keep list, we just enter it into our um, filter filtering of analysis DF. We'll call it analysis DF reduced, right? So we keep the state of analysis DF. We just do analysis DF reduced. Okay. I would. Um, yeah. And then, so this dropped a lot of columns, right? This dropped a lot of columns. So we started with um, 39 columns here. We're down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Like, sorry, here it is 19 columns. So yeah, we dropped like nine columns. Uh, okay. Um, 19 columns, rather. Okay. Then, in order to drop rows, right, we will now um, only focus on our antidepressant. So, this is where we will differ. So, my particular 
demo antidepressant is amitriptyline because no none of you um, selected that. So I will select amitriptyline. But you have to put in your own antidepressant here. So if it's bupropion, if it's venlafloxacin, um, yeah. And that will significantly reduce the number of rows from 6 million to 500,000 for me. Yours might be different, right? Yours might be different because there might be, I don't know, a lot more people using bupropion, right? A lot, there might be less people using um, cytolopram, okay? So, but still it's big. 520,000 multiplied by 19 is still like a million, millions of records, right? Five million times yeah, times two, like ten million data points. Right? Ten million data points. But memory usage was significantly decreased from one point nine gigabytes. Now it's just seventy nine megabytes, right? So it's now smaller than some of the Peach One videos. Okay. All right. Um, before we convert to dummy variables, we have to make sure that there is no empty cell in this VS code. Okay, so we use this code to check if there is a null value or an empty cell in the disease code column. Then we saw that there's zero, so that we're good, right? If there were um, if there were missing values here. We have to place zero as a default. Okay. Um, why zero? Um, because we are replacing it with the mode. Most likely, um, the mode is you don't have that kind of disease. Okay. Okay. I got so what a mode is there's three central tendencies in statistics. So a median, a mean, which is the average. A median, which is the middle point, and the mode. The mode is um, like the most frequent value. Okay, so um, since um, disease code is not it's not a numerical entity, we cannot compute an average. Right, we cannot compute a middle point. We can only compute for um, the mode, which is the most frequent value. So that's the central tendency of disease code. And for data analysis purposes, very quick data analysis purposes, we just replace um, it with, with the central tendency, which is the mode. But there are more complex ways of, of putting in missing values that we'll not cover yet. Okay. But keep that in mind. Yeah. So missing values imputation. Okay. Now, um, we will. This data set is still big, right? Um, because we will add, there's already like 19 columns, right? And we were expecting to add 6,000 columns, right? So it will still be very big. So what I'm doing is that I'm creating a copy of the data frame that just has, that just has the primary key, which is person ID, AD grouping, and antidepressant grouping and trial number, okay, and the disease code. So only four columns. I will create a copy on that, from that. I will create my my intention is to create the dummy variables from this smaller uh, smaller data frame, and then just just do a left join later. Okay. So that was the plan. Um, and then from the original data frame, this one, since I do not need disease code anymore, I will just drop it. Or disease code is already here. Um, okay, so creating a dummy variable. If you don't have a big enough server, a big enough server, so I told you, my, for me, it worked 32, 208 worked. Right? For you, it might be smaller, it might be bigger. If you do not have a big enough server, 
your kernel will die. You will say you will see a red um, icon here, kernel dead or dead kernel. I forgot. And then there will be a message that the kernel died. That just means that the code is bit too the code is too big to run. Um, the code is too big to run. Um, so I encourage you to be patient. Okay, um, be patient and just increase the number of resources that you have until it runs. It will eventually run, but you have to make sure that you have a big enough server. Okay, so it's just a similar way of creating the dummy variables from uh, from what we did with H with H range. Okay, so but this time instead of creating bins, we don't need bins because we already have um, categorical or discrete variables. Diseases are all um, not already categorical, so we can just get, do get dummies straight away. Okay, you can call get dummies straight away from this and um, disease code. Our prefix will be disease, so it will be disease and then the the disease code. Disease, disease code. Okay, so it will be easier for us to uh, understand later. Okay, and then again, I drop the disease code column, minimize to minimize um, the dimensionality if we don't need the column i'd rather drop it and let the code and so that the code will run instead of not drop it and then do face more headaches because the code doesn't run so again i saw it i, I told you there are now 600 6150 columns okay also uh, deduct three from that because those are our primary keys so there are 6,147 disease, diseases, unique diseases in our data set, okay? And 520,000 rows. And the size of just this, um, of just this trial, disease per trial data frame is already 23 gigabytes. So we have to, again, re reduce the dimensionality, okay? So I will create um, a vector or, or a series, okay? Containing um, the sum of each of the columns, of each of the columns of this table, okay? And Store it in column sums, okay. And then I will drop, I will drop columns for which the sum of columns that starts with disease starts with this is less than thirty. Okay. So what happened is that if I do this, right, and I drop, I drop those columns, we reduce the number of columns from 6,150 to 1,601. We reduce the memory usage from 23 gigabytes to six gigabytes, okay? Okay, now it would have been easy to just join the disease per trial data frame with our original analysis DF reduced data frame. But again, server timeout. I already had the 32 gig, 200, 32 CPUs, 208 gig server. It's still timed out on me. Um, the kernel died on me. Um, so I did another thing to help um, reduce, um, reduce the dimensions of the data. So I aggregated the data. So I think you learned this in SQL where you can group by. So aggregation is just group by. <laughs> so I will group by. Um, so first 
I will group by the analysis DF reduce using our primary key. I want only one row for each primary key in our analysis DF reduced. Um, so to do that, um, I will, my aggregation rule will be, I'll get the first, um, the first value of any column in analysis DF reduced when I group by, right? when I group by, use group by, okay? Um, so any column that's not a primary key, okay? Get the first and the first, um, the first value. So for example, this column, uh, earliest 80 start date, get the first value. Remission, get the first value. So that's the logic, okay? I did the same aggregation for the CSPER trial, one, one row for the primer, per primary key, person ID. But this time, this time, instead of getting the first value, I'll get the maximum value. Why? I wanted to, for example, that particular disease exists. That means it's a one, right? Because the, each dummy variable will have either a one or a zero. A one is it's present, a zero if it's not present, right? So I want it to be, a. if there are any rows, I group them, if there are any rows that that disease is a one, meaning that person really has the disease, then I want to get the one. No, I don't want to get the first, first entry. I want to get the maximum entry, which is in this case, there's only two values, zero and one. So the maximum will be one. If it's a one, I want to get a one. That person has that, um, has that disease um, for that particular trial. Okay. So I get the max. Okay. And that's the only time that my left join worked. Okay. So, um, so what happened? from 500,000 rows, by doing the aggregation, we reduce that to 1,985 rows. And again, the columns is 1,616, which is just all of the columns of the analysis data frame plus all of the disease dummy columns. And this should be what it looks like. Um, and now the disease data frame was re further reduced from 6.2 gigabytes and now it's 24 MB. 24 MB, we can start, we can process this with a smaller computer. So that's why I told you we will only temporarily increase our, our resources. In order to do that, we do a checkpoint, right? We do a checkpoint just like what we did before. So I created the analysis DF reduced. I created a CSV file for that. Okay. Um, and now when we do an info, because there's so many columns, we cannot see the data types. So succeeding analysis, we will change data types as we experience these issues because there's um, not a um, sustainable way that we can really check 1,600 um, columns and check whether they have um, the same uh, the same uh, data type before and after import. Okay, and then another another uh, another restoration point for our checkpoint where we read. Um, from the CSV file, okay. So it's still the same. So we just look at the info. If it's roughly the same rows, or no, roughly. If it's the same number of rows, and the same number of columns, and the same size, then we have. We just assume that everything is working well, okay. Um, and then of course, we can check. We can actually check the the head and then and then see if everything is the same as above, then I, I figured everything is. 
see there's a one there there's a one there and everything else is zero so yeah roughly roughly the same in here as well the the people reported are roughly the same okay so after after this we have to make sure that we have saved the data and we are able to read it correctly and we can now we can now like go back to like eight cpus 30 gigs of ram 40 cents an hour and then um do do our analysis on a smaller server okay and we will just do a big server um when we need it yeah so yeah okay so that's how we um we um handle those large data sets we will definitely uh consume more resources but we only consume as much resources at, as we need for the, the um the time for us as, as much of the time that we need and then we can reduce this, the resources particularly now that you are all probably will be going will be working on um cloud-based um solutions so yeah you pay by the hour with cloud just like with all of us you pay by the hour okay okay so now it's lab breakout time so i'll stop recording